During the spring and the fall, we've broken down the Sermon on the Mount, which Jesus taught into 15 mini-sermons. So during the spring, half of them, and half of them during the fall, if you've stuck with us here, we've covered all the different topics that Jesus gave in what is known now as the Sermon on the Mount. It, ranges, it covers all kinds of topics that tries to show us, Jesus is saying, it's not spiritual and secular. It's like everything is spiritual. Everything that's even not religious has a religious side to it, and we need to trust the Spirit to help us in all realms of life. And that fits well with our theme we've had for this year, the, team theme, the, that, the theme Team Spirit, that we want to be on team with the Holy Spirit, and we want to be on team with one another. And the Sermon on the Mount has been a very practical way of looking how, to be, how do we live it out, the work of the Spirit inside of us in everyday life. And so I hope you've been able to benefit from those, and the sermons are all online. If you've missed something or want to go back and re-listen, or if you just love listening to me so much and you miss me during the week, you can turn it on and, and hear my soothing voice. So um, they're all saved for many millennia to be able to hear. So we want to be able to finish it off with the choice that God has given to us. And Jesus talked about choices. We talked about the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, we talked about the choice that there are two roads that we're on. And we have to choose the right road. And then last week we talked about there's lots of false teachers out there. we got to be careful who we listen to. And we have to choose the, those that are helping speaking truth into our life and not those that are leading us astray. And then today he finishes up, gives us a final choice with an illustration that reminds us that our lives need to have a strong foundation. And either your house is built on a rock or it's built on the sand. And we saw the little illustration of the video that tells the story, but we're going to read it. From God's word, the way that he spoke it in Matthew chapter 7, and we will read this out loud together then, okay? It says this, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Some of you have a little song going through your head. You grew up with that little song about it. The story is very simple. It's probably one of the simplest stories that Jesus told in all of his teaching. We have two different houses built on different foundations. We have one storm of wind and rain and floods, but two different outcomes. Perhaps you saw this picture that kind of went viral a couple weeks ago when Hurricane Michael went through the panhandle of Florida. This is in the town of Mexico Beach. And, and after the hurricane, there's this one house standing the only, the only damage to it was a couple was a couple broken windows, and all around it, all the other houses had just been leveled flat. And everybody's like amazed, what happened here? And it turns out that the, that the two men who had the house built, and it was just finished like six months ago, last spring, they decided we're going to just spend a little bit extra and go a little bit above the building codes and just make our house a little bit stronger than the typical house. And so. They consulted with the engineers. They said, well, what we need is to just make the foundations a little bit wider than what normally are. So they used a little bit more cement and made the foundations a little bit wider than what is average. And on the corners of the house, they made them even thicker so that the corners would be really strong. And then they attached some cables to the roof to hold it onto the house. So if the wind came, it would blow the roof off the house. So they put some cables in. So they, they spent maybe an extra 15% on the house by doing all these things. But then six months later, look what happens. The house on the beach that stood was the one that they put the extra foundation in. And as I was preparing for this last couple of weeks, I remembered seeing this online and thought, this is what a great real life story today of a house that stands in the midst of the devastation that was there. And so Jesus asked the story, and he says, what are you building your life upon? What is your foundation? And we look around us, and we see a lot of people who, man, their lives are just falling over right and left because they don't have a foundation to stand on. We see a lot of people who are standing, even in the midst of the most difficult situations, 
And most likely it's because they have a foundation in their life that's founded upon the Word of God. And we have that to our, available to us. So Jesus says that we need the Word of God. And he says for those that hear the Word of God. And back in his days, people didn't have their Bibles. They weren't able to read things. They heard the Word of God by listening. And so they would gather at the synagogues to be able to hear the Word of God. I mean, imagine if you never had a chance to read anything from the Bible. The only Bible you got was when you came to church and you heard somebody read it to you. I mean, imagine if that was all you ever had in your life and how valuable that would be because you hear those words and if you're like me, you hear things and you forget them. And it would be terrible to go home and think, oh, what was that? What was it that, that God said in that verse today that we read or that we heard today read to us? And, and for us, it's easy. We can look it up in the book. We can look it up online on our phones everywhere. We've got so much access to it. I think sometimes we, we forget how important it is to hear the word of God because it's, it's always there if we need it. You know, you just do a Google search and you find the verse you're looking for. But back then, it was very difficult to do. And people needed to hear the Word of God. And whether you hear the Word of God through your ears or through your eyes, what's important is that we are taking it in and letting it be a part of our foundation of who we are in our life. The Apostle Paul talks about what it is to hear the Word of God and the effect that it has. And he told us in Romans chapter 10, he says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? So faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. There's a, there's a chain reaction here that goes on. And someone has to be sent with the mission to spread the word of God. So they preach it and then people hear it. And when people hear it, they have the opportunity to believe it. And then to believe it, they're able to call upon the name of the Lord. So if you look at it backwards, if someone wants to, if we want people to be able to call the name of the Lord, what has to happen? Well, they have to be able to believe, but how are they going to believe it unless they hear it? And how are they going to hear it unless somebody preaches, tells it to them? And how is somebody going to preach it to them unless they realize that they are sent but it's our mission and it's easy to say well i'm glad we have a preacher in town you know he's the one that does this and you may be looking through that thinking well okay we got that covered but all of us are sent we are all sent to be preachers so that people can hear and believe and call upon the name of the lord that is our mission all of us i'm just the guy that's standing behind you going okay this is the equipment these are the tools this is the inspiration you need let's go out and do it we're one big team all right? And so we go out and we do that. That is our job. And we know people out there whose lives are on the sand. And it's our job to be able to help introduce them to a new way of building their house. To help them rebuild their house on a foundation that is strong. And so this is very important for all of us here to be able to do this. You know, I mentioned that we're going to have this little seminar, you know, three hours that I'm going to spread all my wealth and wisdom that I have about how we reach out to people. How do we reach out as people sent to be able to preach so that people can hear and believe and call in the name of the Lord? I mean, it's a chance to be able to, to together see ourselves as a quick team to be able to do this. You know, and I put a sign-up sheet out there and I put 25 numbers on there because I think we could have 25 people from this church going to that, spending three hours getting under better understanding. How can we all do this? We need to be able to do this. This is what Jesus told us to do. And he didn't tell us just come here and have a church service. He said, go and tell the world. And that's important for us to do. No matter what our age, we all have something to be able to give. We all the people whose lives are built on the sand. And we have the opportunity to be able to introduce them to a house on a rock. And I would encourage you to sign up and come to that. It won't be next week, it'll be the week after, um, but it's such an important thing to spend three hours going, how can I do this better? And so I can't make you be there, but I can just encourage you, get on my knees if I have to, but it is so important that we do this. So if you can make time in your schedule to do that, I would make that a high, high priority so that we can do that.
If we're not intentional about it, it's not going to happen. And I can tell you, I was, I've been in Christian work as a full-time worker, but haven't been intentional about evangelism all the time while I had a job. And you say, well, that's your job. If you're a missionary or a pastor or worker at a church, you're supposed to be out there reaching people. But it would happen haphazardly. I was never intentional about it, all like I should have been, until I learned a few years ago how to be intentional about it. And not that I'm the world's best evangelist and I haven't led thousands of people to Christ, but... But in everyday life, there are people in my world, and I've got this vision glasses on now that, that help me see, is that person built on a rock or built on a sand? Ding, 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 I see they're on the sand. So what do I need to do to help them to do that? And there's different ways to be able to do that. And we'll explore that in the seminar that we're gonna do. And um, just, we have to be intentional or it's just not gonna happen. We'll go through our life and never have influenced somebody else to be able to rebuild their life on a rock. It's not about just hearing the word. Jesus says, it's not a matter of just hearing the word, but doing what? Well, I said the word, but doing it. Those who hear the word and do it are like the person whose house is built on the rock. The person who hears it and doesn't do it is like the person whose house is on the sand. And so we're not only to be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. When we are confronted with the word of God in our own reading or at church, you know, we got to put it into practice. We need to leave here and leave God's word each day saying, now, what do I do with this? Is this just information for my head? Because just listening to wisdom doesn't make you wise. Wisdom is shown through our actions, through movement, through results. And so there's a contrast between the wise people who hear and do it and the foolish people who hear it and don't do it. And the Apostle James, he wrote about this. He said, be hearers of the word and not hearers only, but deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and pers perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, will be blessed in his doing. I mean, very clearly here. And, you know, you can come to church and hear a sermon and leave feeling good, but if it doesn't change your life in some way, if something doesn't improve or you change this or that, then, then we're like looking in a mirror and walking away and forgetting what we look like. So our words precede action. There are many who hear the words of Christ and they ignore it. There's some who say, I hear God's word, but it's not really for me or it's not for me now. Some people kind of filter it that way. I know at times I've referenced this chart because it's so vital to our Christian growth. You know, we start with knowledge. We learn about God. We're hearers, all right? Okay? But when we hear and when we take the knowledge of God, and we let it deepen our faith in God, then we're, we're trusting his word that he gave us. As our faith is deepened and becomes more a part of us, it transforms our character so that we become different from the inside out. And as we change on the inside, we begin to have actions that show the fruit that started way up at the top at knowledge. And so knowledge in and of itself isn't enough. There's a lot of people who know a lot about God, but it stops there. There are some people who, they have a lot of knowledge of God and it makes them have a deep faith in God, but all they do is just sit at home and bunker down and trust God with everything, but that's not the goal either. Some people have the knowledge of God, the faith in God, and it makes them a better person, their character's transformed, and they think, oh, okay, I'm a better person now. So they think that's the end result. That's not the end result. The end result is action, that we have knowledge that deepens our faith, that transforms our character, that it propels us out there to do the works of God. And once it's gotten around to action, then God's word has produced the fruit that's needed in the lives that it was intended to do. And I know we're lazy and we have excuses and we're busy, but God says this is of vital importance, that we take our knowledge that it turns into faith and character and becomes action and the world is changed and we are glorifying God through all of these things. James 3.13, James goes on and says, Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works 
in the meekness of wisdom. I mean, true wisdom that Jesus is talking about here, the house built on a rock is taking the word that they've heard and they're doing it and making it a part of their lives. So keep growing, keep doing, keep, keep exercising those faith muscles and step out there where you've never stepped before into the world that God is giving you. As you know, every year we have a theme for the, for the year, and even though 2019 is still a couple months away, oh, well, first of all, yeah, I'll say this here, the written word and the living word. You know, we have the written word that's the Bible, but we got Jesus who's the living word, and as those things work together, that we are able to see how God's word can be something that we stand on. But as we think about 2019, through prayer, I've come up with a new theme for the year. It's called Hanging on Every Word. That'll be the, the little motto that we're going to hear through the next year, Hanging on Every Word. And when we're talking about the word, we're talking about the word of God. You know, you're hanging on to it. We're trusting it. We're claiming it. We're allowing it to fill our minds and our souls in ways maybe it hasn't before. I would love to see our church become stronger at knowing God's word, at being able to study it, memorize it, hide it in our heart, to be able to apply it, to be able to speak it. That's an area we can always grow on. We never get to the place where we just have God's word down, pat, and we're right there. We can all grow in that. And so I'd love to see us over the next year, 2019, hanging on every word of God. And when we have those storms in our life, Man, we're hanging on. God said this, and the world around me is blowing me here and there, but I'm holding on. I'm hanging on to God's word, and we're going to trust him like never before. We don't know what 2019 is going to bring in our lives. We don't even know what tomorrow, Monday, is going to bring. But in during 2019, let's exercise those faith muscles, and let's hang on every word that God has given to us. And I'm going to give a challenge to the church, and I can tell you about it now so you have time to think about it and prepare but what I would love for us to do, and maybe you've done this before, and it's a common thing that some people do for like the first two months of the year and then they drop off. But what if we as a church said, let's read the Bible through together in a year? Could we take that challenge that between January 1st and December 31st, we'll have taken God's word and read it from cover to cover? Maybe you've done that before. Maybe you've tried and failed, but maybe this is a year we could do that together. And I found a reading plan that is awesome. And I know a lot of times what we do, you start reading the Bible and you get through Genesis, Exodus, and then about February you get to some of the boring parts, and then we give up. I mean, and a lot of us have done that, and I see smiles on the face, because I've done it too, okay? I've tried it, and I give up at a certain place. But I found a plan that divides the Bible into four parts. And every day you're reading a little bit from four different parts. So you're reading something from the Old Testament, and then you're reading something from the, from, the, uh, from, the, from the wisdom books of the Old Testament. So like Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. So you're reading something from there. Then you're reading something from the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John about Jesus. And then you're reading something from the rest of the New Testament. So you, you have four smaller passages each day. But it, so that way if there's one passage that's kind of boring and you get, it's all the genealogies or all the laws about the temple sacrifices, you can at least read something that day that might feed your soul a little bit more. And so, and the good thing about this plan is it has us reading 25 days a month. So there's some built-in days that if you just get behind a day or two, you know, you can catch up a little easier because I know that's part of the problem. You get behind so many days and then you just give up. So if you have, a, you know, one day a week that if you miss, it's okay. Or if you just want to get it done and take a week off at the end, uh, I think it's a really good plan. And I just think it'd be really great to be able to look around the congregation and say, we're doing this together. You know, and we're going to help each other, encourage each other to be in God's word, hang on his every, every word. Along with that, next year, the sermons will always be from a passage that we read that week. So we'll pick a passage from that week, and that's what you'll hear being taught that Sunday. So I won't be teaching in series and things like that that I've done, but we'll always pick something from God's word that we're reading together. And if you choose not to do it, don't feel left out like you can't come to church anymore. You still can come and gather what it is. But I think that would be a great challenge to do together. And I'm really excited about that opportunity. And I haven't done that for a long time, read the Bible in a year. And it would be fun to do that with you and to be able to preach it with you. And even on top of that, I was thinking maybe we could have a book club if somebody's interested in getting together and discuss things. Or even just have like a Facebook page or an online forum that we can discuss what we're reading with each other. We can do it online. 
So we'll look into some opportunities like that. But I would love to see us grow together. We can hang on every word and do what Jesus told us to keep building our lives on that rock. I think that's a great, great goal to have. And you can be thinking about that as you're probably going to be soon thinking about New Year's resolutions and what next year will bring. And I'm looking forward to the next year, what it can bring in our lives. So I want to close this with a passage from Psalm 119. It's a passage that talks about how great God's word is. But as the writer here tells us, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things, and give me life in your ways. Confirm to me your servant, or to your servant, your promise, that you may be feared. Turn away the reproach that I dread, for your rules are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. May we hunger for God and his word and build our life upon it and not be hearers only but doers and be a congregation that just rises to the occasion. It's a beautiful thing when we follow God's ways. As we
Thousand charms.